So Kyle, take it away. Perfect. Well, appreciate it, Phil, and uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I think we had, uh, I don't know if anybody on here was on our previous call, but um, we had maybe had a call, I think it was two or three weeks ago, and we had covered quite a bit of our product information. So Phil thought today would be kind of a good idea to take the next step and just go over, first of all, uh, how to access our, our agent website, uh, what are some, you know, good areas to be going to for information there, and then uh, how to run an illustration. So really three things, how to access website, good areas there. Number two, how to, how to run an illustration and kind of tinker around with that system. And then third, um, you know, getting the ball rolling and starting an application through our e-application system. So those are the, the three main things I had to cover today. As always, if anybody has questions, uh, feel free to chime in in the, uh, the questions tab and we'll be happy to answer those. But uh, I am going to uh, be sharing my screen here. Give me one moment. Uh, here we go. All right, uh, can you, uh, Phil, can you see my screen here? Does it say log in? Yes. Okay, perfect. So when you guys do get appointed with us, which I hope everybody was able to do that last after last time we talked, you're gonna receive a welcome email. And in that email, you're gonna get your agent number and how to log into this agent portal. This is where you can go to take any product training. We're gonna have uh, any marketing materials here, as well as how to start our um, e-application, which is called ReadyApp. So I'll just log in here real quick. And for anybody that's going to be logging in for the first time, their login is going to be their agent number for the username. And uh, for the password, they're going to be uh, their agent number plus the last four of their social security number. And then it will just ask you to reset that password to something that you'll remember. So this is our agent website. Um, for anything that you guys are looking for, that's marketing materials or wanting to pull up rate sheets or videos or anything like that. You know, we've had a lot of feedback over the years that this is a bit outdated. We actually redid our agent resource page. Uh, I actually have that pulled up here and I'll get you guys all the link to that. But um, I think I may have, did I send that over in the email that I followed up with last time, Phil? Yes, you did. Okay. So this is honestly going to be the best page for resources. It's just a lot easier to navigate than the, the previous page. That previous page is where you'll go to do an application or do any product training, but anything outside of that, I would use this page here. Um, I think the biggest points of interest that you're gonna have is, you know, a lot of times you just wonder what are the current rates with the company? So if you come down here and you click on rate sheets, it'll actually pull up this nice uh, little page here that has all of our different product options. And if we click those, uh, we can even scroll down here and see all of those. We can look at the different products and actually download those and pull those up. Um, pretty easy access. I know sometimes uh, you know you'll you'll have to call in and request someone to send it to you, but really it's all at your fingertips here. You don't even have to be appointed with us to go to this web page. Uh, it's all for uh, any agents out there that are, are looking for the information. So pretty nifty. Um, if I go back here, click this uh, tab up here. So we do have another section where you can kind of look at some more marketing materials. So if we come into this annuity section here, you know, I know we talked a lot about the asset shield last time. So I'm scrolling down here to the asset shield section, clicking on learn more. Um, we've put in some nice bullet points on how the product works. What are the different features? Uh, looks like we put an even put a nice little example in here of a typical client that would be 
looking at something like this. And down here is all of our product brochures. These are all client approved. And we also have some uh, other materials that come along with this that are pretty, uh, pretty nice to hand to a client as well that talk about uh, things related to the, the asset shield. Just a Coming cheap, back. shameless plug. You know, yeah. just uh, just remind people that the new asset shield bonus came out uh, ten percent yes. right off the bat. So, uh, great opportunity for rollovers, maybe some near the end of their uh, current annuity, and uh, you need to get through compliance, so to speak, or someone is just looking to get an additional ten percent. You can see right there. Go for it. Yep, so that is a brand new product that came out recently and it's it's really popular. Um, yeah, get you get your client that 10% bonus, maybe make up for some losses they've had in the market over the past couple of years, or maybe they're trying to get out of an older product and we need to make up for some surrender charges. So a uh, great option, even has a close to a 3% fixed rate on it right now, if you wanna get a, a guaranteed rate inside of that. Yeah, that's uh, thank you. Thank you for bringing that up, Phil. Um, so coming back here to this page, a lot of advisors, uh, do have questions on how the indexes work. So this is a really nice resource to explore those options. So what this will show is it will pop up with each index that we have available. And let's just scroll over to the SG global for an example here. If we click this learn more button. This is actually going to take us to the SG Global website. So this is where you can go to really get a lot of in-depth information on the indexes and how they're invested, you know, what their investment strategy is, kind of looking at charts over time periods. So if you really, really want to get in the weeds on it and how it works, I would definitely recommend checking this out. So we'll close out of that. Have a, an idea on what ones are usually the more popular indexes that people pick, uh, statistic-wise. Yeah, statistically, like it's changed over the years. So um, I would say over the past probably three years, with kind of how the market's been, the volatility control indexes are a lot more popular because they have volatility control mechanisms on them, which kind of smooth out that you know roller coaster ride of the market. Because if we were just invested in the S&P 500 cap over the past three years, we really just don't have any control over what the mark is doing with, you know, going up and down. Whereas with those volatility controls, so like the CS Tech Edge, the SG Global, those are companies. And as I showed you their website, they have, you know, fund managers that are working there. They're, you know, reducing the amount of equity exposure in the portfolio more fixed income exposure based on what the future of the market's going to do. And they have really, really good participation rates as you look at some of those um, rate sheets that we have. So those have just, those have definitely been the most popular, the volatility control. Yeah. Yeah. Good question. <laughs> Perfect. So the other three, you know, areas here, product training. So if we click this, this is uh, going to be a link where you can go and you can take training on the specific products. This is actually taking us back into that original website. You could just go back here. Um, and there's some information on our loyalty rewards program here. The uh, next thing that I wanted, well, before I, before I go to that, any questions? Does anybody have any questions as I was walking through those main bullet points on the agent resource page there? And for uh, the cheap shameless plug, you'd probably want to talk about that loyalty rewards program a little bit more in depth and maybe any uh, incentives or carrots that uh, you guys are doing right now. So. Yeah, we can definitely look at it. So really the, the biggest benefit of this is when you do hit the million dollar mark with us, you get into that first tier of our loyalty rewards program. Um, here's... Here's an example down here. So 
a million to 1,999,000, so 2 million, there's a new tier, but we would pay you 25 basis points on all of your business back to dollar one. So we pay out an a, additional bonus check that uh, advisors will get and that comes out every other month starting in uh, March of each year. So as you can see, that continues to go up. The more business you write, all the way up to 150 basis points at that $10 million mark. Um, if you guys do go in here and I'll probably follow up with an email to you, Phil, I'll send you the flyer on it. Uh, there's a couple other little minor perks there when you hit that million dollar mark. Um, we do have a FedEx discount. So if you're shipping things, I think it's like a 50% FedEx discount with us. Um, there's also and this has changed over the years, so I don't know exactly what this is going to look like in the future, but we do host trips that advisors get to go on, and that's more based on your ranking within the company. Um, for example, this year, this is one of uh, probably the coolest trips I think we're ever going to be doing, but for our top 200 advisors, they're going to uh, Montauks, I think is how you say it, Switzerland. Um, so I think that'll be a really cool trip. So yeah, I'll, I'll get you the brochure on this, the flyer. There, there's a little bit more information, but main point is once you hit a million, you start getting paid extra money uh, from us for really no extra work. It's just to uh, you know show that we appreciate you as a producer with us. All right, so let's jump into, I guess, any other questions on um, any of that stuff? Perfect. So let's jump into the illustration system here. As I'm clicking around. Um, so if you go to this web page, this is one way to get here. You'll click launch calculators. And really the main system that I use is this fixed index annuity illustration software. These other two are more for internal use. You really probably won't be using those. But if you click the link here, and what I've actually done is I've uh, made this a favorite so I can just go here automatically. So you can always bookmark this page. So I thought it would be a good exercise is just to run through um, an example of a illustration that we'd run for a client. So um, pretty kind of self-explanatory here, but you're just gonna go through each step. If you guys are logging in here and you're filling this out, you're in your under your agent code, this information is actually just going to pre-populate with your address, your zip code, all of that information will already be in there. So next we're going to fill out the information on the client. I'm just going to use valued client as the name. You can check if it's non-qualified or qualified. This really doesn't uh, affect how the illustration outputs, uh, but some people like to make sure that the, uh, you know, whatever it says on the illustration is the type of funds it's going to be. So let's just do an example of a, what do you think typical clientele for this group is uh, for age-wise, Phil? I'd say, you know, varies probably between 40 to 50. So I'd say probably like All right. 50. Yeah, let's, do 50. All right, let's do 45. So let's do 45. We're gonna qualify here. Here's where we're gonna pick our products. So I know we talked about that asset shield bonus. Let's look at that one. So we're gonna do the asset shield bonus. We actually just recently added this. This is kind of neat. So this will actually sort down if you uncheck some of these boxes. Let's say you wanna do a fixed annuity. So we do have fixed products as well. It's only gonna show those. Hey, we wanna do an income product. It's gonna add those on there. And then if we wanna do accumulation, which is the asset shield, it's, gotta be, it's added all of those on there. So it makes it a little bit easier to, to pick out which one you want. All right, so we're gonna to go to this page. So this is where we're actually kind of putting in how we're gonna invest the money. I'm gonna say 200,000 for this example. Let's say we're doing a 401k rollover and this client just wants to invest the money. They want to keep it principally protected. They really like the idea of the bonus, but they don't want to like keep losing money in their 401k that's invested in the stock market. So there's a lot of different options here. Um, I'm just going to put in 
a, a breakdown of one that I, I think is pretty common that I, I like to use a lot. And I'm not saying that you guys have to use this breakdown, um, but this is just for this example here. So I'm going to do 25% into the CS Tech Edge to your point to point. I'm going to do 50% into this SG Global. Those are those volatility control indexes. And the remainder I'm going to put into the dividend aristocrats. You so can actually. Question. Yeah. So, um, you know, I've had a lot of people ask me about the monthly point to point with monthly cap. Uh, is that an average at the end of the year uh, between all the ups and the downs, or is that actual returns that you get per month? No, it's an average at the end of the year. And, and the tip, the reason I don't like it is just because the cap's so low. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's just the other ones are probably going to do better in the long term. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if I were, if I were going to do the cap, the annual point to point is probably the one I would go with. Because mm -hmm. that one's got an 11% cap with a fee or a 9% with a no fee. Mm -hmm. And uh, but honestly, can you explain the fee real quick too, just uh, you know, for yep. basic so, purposes. So the fee is a per, it's called a performance rate rider. So it's essentially a rider that you can add on to get a higher participation rate. So as you can see here, when you hit this drop down, if we don't want the fee, we on this particular index we get 140 percent participation rate. Versus if we pay the 3% fee, we can get a 240% participation rate. So if you got a 10% return, well, rather than getting what's that, a 14% return, now you get a 24% return. And then you just subtract the 3%, so that's 21. So, you know, the fee does come out even if you don't get a return that year, but this is a principally protected product. So that 200,000 that you've put in, you would never have less than that after the 10 year period is up. You're always gonna be brought back to your principal amount if the worst case scenario played out. But I just think based on how high that rate is, if we get anything positive on those indexes, it makes sense to do the fee. Now, some people, they just throw their hands up. They don't want a fee. Great, we have that option as well. But you're just really supercharging the possibility for growth in the policy if you have that fee on there. Does that make sense? Yeah. <clears throat> so I am showing it with the fee. This is gonna show the, the best illustrated. Another thing you can do in here too, is if let's say the client wants to save into this, so you move the money over, or let's just say you're starting up a new Roth IRA or a IRA, you can make it so they're showing them putting in money over a period of time as well. For this example, I'm just gonna show like a rollover and the money's gonna sit there and grow but you can also add that in. So there's a couple options on this. This is the income section. So you can show withdrawals. So you could show, hey, they wanna take out 4% every year starting at this age, or they wanna take out their 10% penalty free amount, or they have RMDs coming up at, I think it's 73 now. So we would show that coming out as well. For this example, I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna show any withdrawals, but that is an option that you can show in there. This doesn't have any riders on the, in, there's no income rider here. So for this particular policy, it's not gonna show up. We go next here. And as you can see, this is a nice little summary. So it's showing us end of year one, we've got our 200,000. Here's our premium bonus. So it's showing 220,000 right away. And over here is the total value of all three of these indexes combined. So let's just jump out 10 years from now, you know, assuming we get the returns that we've gotten on this in the past, we're gonna have close to $550,000 inside of here uh, at year 10 based on that growth rate. As this continues to grow out, we get out to, you know, age 70, you know, estimated to be close to $2 million, $2 million by age 70. So here's kind of where we can pick our output. 
Uh, I always select first 25 years for the output just because it makes the illustration a little bit shorter. If you do select all years, it's just going to show every single year. So it's going to add a few pages to your illustration. But we'll view the illustration here. I think this should load here. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time to load. It's loading, you know, just going back to the income part, do you find that most people, if they're going to do an income, usually switch to the income shield? Or have you seen a lot of people use the asset shield and just do, because uh, you have higher participation rates on this product? Like, what, what's the typical setup for most people? I would say if you need guaranteed income, income shield is the way to go. Because keep in mind, the asset shield is not a guarantee the growth inside of it is not guaranteed. Whereas in the income shield, you get a guaranteed roll up rate every single year, no matter what the market does. Um, I mean, there are people that use the asset shield in that way, but we just have no way of knowing for sure 10 years from now that you're actually going to have this amount of money, right? right. Where, whereas income's guaranteed. So I think it just puts people more at a peace of mind. Uh, a lot of people, what we'll see, and I think we'll see this in the future is, well, you know, we got the money right now, we're 40, 45 years old, we just don't want to put it in the market. Let's put it in this asset shield, let's let it roll up for 10, maybe 20 years. Net, And then at that point, maybe we have, you know, a million dollars, $2 million inside of this asset shield. Well, now let's roll it into an income product that just guarantees our income for life. So I was thinking, yeah. Yeah, I think that we'll see that in the future. I mean, who knows what's going to happen 10, 20 years from now. But um, I think it just depends on the client and what they, you know, feel comfortable with as well. Mm -hmm. Does that answer that okay? Yep. So uh, we won't go super in depth on the illustration, but we'll just hit some of the highlights here. We actually just redid this, so I think it's a lot easier to read and it's it's nicer. Um, really, the main the main page that we want to look at. We're always going to show projected values based on worst case scenarios, so guaranteed basis, right? If we get no return ever, which would be worst case scenario, the nice thing about our policies, and a lot of people don't realize this, is this cash surrender value, it's going to continue to grow. And we do actually have a minimum guaranteed interest rate of 2.95% on that cash surrender value. So if for whatever reason we didn't get higher than that, they're going to get that on their policy. Now that's only 87.5% of the value, but they're still going to have more than what, the, what they started with if the worst case scenario plays out, which probably won't happen, but we just have to show that. This is uh, based on the backdated performance. So a couple key things to point out here. We're looking at column five end of year credited interest rate, our average return, <clears throat> this is based on the past 20 years. So we're projecting that forward. We're going to get like a 12.64% average return. So if we think about that in relation to, you know, what the market's done over the past 40 years, I think it's seven or 8% average return, but we're doing this with absolutely no downside risk. So if we could do, do this, That'd be pretty good. That'd be really good. Um, you know, we're looking at the values projected out, kind of like that summary. And then this jumps all the way to age 114. So if we kept this till 114, it's assuming we'd have $165 million inside of the policy. So looks pretty good. There's also some uh, graphs that we're projecting out as well, showing the contract value growing every single year. Um, this is a nice page as well. It's showing three different time periods that we've taken over the last 20 years for these all three different indexes. So it's going to separate them out, but basically showing you, you know, what was the best return they've ever gotten, what was the worst, and what was the most recent. I think it's always good to show a client the worst, right? Hey, here's what's the worst that's ever happened. So if we can do better than that, great. And I mean, if we're looking at the worst for this particular index, 10.9%, 
that's still pretty good news. Questions on the uh, illustration system? I definitely encourage everybody to go and log in and play around with this. Um, keep in mind, you guys are busy. You know, if you've got clients and, and, and you know, we, we do provide services of running these illustrations for you. We have a frontline marketing team that you can call into and request them. But I always do think it's good when agents know how to go in here and if they need to adjust them on the fly or whatever it might be. So any questions on that? Those in the audience, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the uh, Q&A chat session uh, just to uh, keep it balanced and easy uh, for everybody to see. So I uh, think we're good so far, as you can see. But uh, I guess the question I would have you know, for this as well is, um, is there any uh, other marketing material on there or, or stuff that uh, the agents can provide to uh, I don't know, check status of their policies, or do you guys have uh, email addresses? What's the best way to check status on the policies for these? Yeah, good question. So uh, when you log into your agent website, it's actually going to look a little bit different than what mine looked like. I can actually probably show you one. Can I pull yours up, Phil? Would that be okay since we got you on the phone? Yeah, totally. Okay. Let's find you here. So I can actually take your agent code and I can log in as you. I'll show you what it will look like here. Well, I will advise most of the stuff I do with uh, my wife, she's uh, the dominant writer, but I've got a case <laughs> or two in here. So no Perfect. judgment. No judgment. That'll be good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that'll be good. Um, so, I thought it looked different, but maybe they changed it. So you're going to go to interactive client or no, sorry, sorry. No, no, no. Uh, I don't do this very often. So you're actually going to go to contract status on this left-hand side here. And it, it's not the greatest system, but it's working for now, but really it's going to show you what are your completed contracts and what are your pending contracts? So mm -hmm. it looks like you've got a couple completed ones from January and then back at the end of last year. Did you say you had some pending right now? Uh, under the misses, but that's all right. Oh, I was just saying. Okay. Yeah. So I guess the so big yeah, thing would be, yeah. You'll be able to view it here and you'll be able to see like any requirements that you need. It's not super detailed. Um, most of the time you'll get emails from our, either like our suitability team, our new business team directly if we're missing a requirement and then just to correspond with them. But you can definitely check it here. You'll have pending contracts. Mm -hmm. You guys have been pretty efficient with uh, getting back to me when I need something done. So I'm uh, very appreciative of that. Yeah, we definitely try. I know it's, uh, it's a big, uh, you know, it's a big um, thing that's of importance to us. So uh, we try to be quick. And I mean, our goal, if you try to, if you send in business, our goal is to get that issued and sent out to the client within a week. So that's our goal. Um, yeah, good question on that. Uh, I was going to jump into the third thing here, the last thing, the ready app system and kind of show agents like, hey, we've gone through all this. We've figured out the product. Now we're ready to, you know, start the process of getting this application rolling. But before I do that, does anybody else have any questions or Phil, did you have anything? Uh, not right now. Okay. So kind of the final step, right? Uh, we're going to start the application. So you're actually going to go back out to this interactive agent page and you're going to want to click on ready app. There is a short little tutorial here. Uh, if anybody's ever used Firelight, this is what it's built through. So you're probably very familiar with how that works. We'll hit start. And uh, I don't really get too much into like actually doing an application, but really it's just selecting, you know, what, um, what state it'll pop up with the, pro the product that you want to pick. So let's go to that. 
and then we're going to hit create and you can actually name this whatever you would like. I'll just I'll just get to the point where I can at least show you some of the pages we're not going to obviously put in any information. The nice thing about this is it won't let you proceed to the next area until you've actually filled out the information that's like absolutely necessary. So these red boxes will pop up. It's just going to require you to fill out all this information as we go along here. Um, so yeah, that'll take you through everything. That'll take you through the suitability questionnaire. Uh, and then there's just a button that you can submit that. That'll go directly to our home office and that'll get pro processed for you. So pretty, pretty easy, pretty simple process there. Um, so that was, that was all I had. I think we're coming up on about 30, a little over 30 minutes here. And uh, I don't know if, um, doesn't look like we have any questions here, but uh, yeah, that was what I had for today. That was good. And, you know, it just goes back to, uh, you know, kind of what we talked about before is, you know, appreciating the partnership, uh, you know, working with such a great company. I uh, really like the, the annuities that you guys have, uh, the bonuses that you guys have for this year as well. Uh, really, you know, make it very appreciative for the, uh, you know, the agent to partner with such a good company and uh, offer some additional value propositions uh, to, you know, incentivize uh, working with you guys too. So um, that never hurts, but uh, you know, the products have been good, easy to understand from an illustration standpoint and uh, it anticipates seeing a, a lot more production here too. Um, we did get a question. Uh, what does the rate of interest and in guarantee depend on meaning? Is it, you know, built in. So you're talking about the guarantee product, like the MIGA product? No, I you... think uh, we're talking about, so if you go back to the asset shield illustration, uh, understanding, you know, on the guaranteed side, uh, what, what makes the numbers, the numbers, so to speak. So um, I guess if you want to just touch on that again, uh, understanding, you know, when you see that guaranteed basis side, how to really, in my opinion, to kind of modify the question a little bit, how would you, um, how would you position that to a client per se? Sure. So I'll scroll to that page here. So we're talking about the guaranteed basis, right? Yep. Yeah. So I'd say, Hey, Mr. Mrs. Client, what I'm showing you here probably will never happen, but we, we do want to show you this is the absolute worst case scenario of your, you know, policy over its lifespan. So what it's showing you is that you're just, you're not getting any interest credit on any of the years. The market's done horribly every year and we don't get anything. The good news is if the market's done poorly, like it did last year, we did a negative 18% on average in the S and P 500. Well, you still didn't lose anything inside of this policy. You did zero which is still a really good thing. And also the even better news is American equity has a built-in minimum guaranteed interest rate of 2.95%, which is located right here on the minimum guaranteed surrender value, which means, you know, let's say you didn't get any return over the first 10 years. Well, we're still going to have a $234,000 surrender value. So you're still going to have more money than what you put in. I don't know if I would spend a ton of time on this because this is like the, like you're talking about worst case scenario. I definitely try to get over to the non-guaranteed basis as soon as you could, could but that's kind of how I would phrase it is um, in that, that manner. Does that answer the question? Okay. Yeah. As I say, I think uh, sometimes like when we look at it, uh, especially right now, with the way that, you know, the markets are doing, the way that, um, you know, banks and all the other stuff, I, I would almost actually emphasize more of the fact that the worst case scenario, all you're losing is time. You're not really losing any of your money uh, from that standpoint. Yeah. So um, that's just a personal opinion. Uh, I think uh, it does add a little flavor to the conversation. Uh, especially, especially when you're talking about large sums of money, because I've talked to some people who want to put, you know, north of a million dollars in, and uh, 
you know, to just exercise the comfort and the fact that, you know, you're not going to lose any money is still a great story. Yeah, I agree. I mean, we don't know what the market's going to do. I think, you know, if we look at history, it's cyclical. We're not going to be in a depression for 10 years. Um, there's always a chance, but I think it's really small. And I, I believe that, you know, it's going to come back and we're going to start seeing these similar interest credits again um, over the length of this time. Because, I mean, we're not looking at one year here. We're looking at 10 years. So I think you just have to do a really good job of coaching your client because we've had, you know, I've had a lot of agents call in, well, hey, like my policy, my client's policy didn't get anything last year. Why is that? Well, we need to put it in perspective, right? If we look at how the market did, we actually win in this scenario. This is the best place to be versus, you know, having it inside of a, a market correlated account. Uh, I mean, I guess you could have it in like your bank account where you're getting a very, very small rate, but we've got a way higher upside here than you would there. So I, I agree with that, Phil. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, a lot of times what we found is people today uh, are very scared to lose money. So just having that conversation too about preservation of principle, never losing that money again, and uh, just the opportunity to grow. Uh, we really, you know, it, it's a really solid conversation. Yeah, and I think the biggest thing that the misnomer with the annuities or the fixed index annuities that people don't realize because, you know, people talk about this stuff and just aren't educated is that their money's completely locked up. Well, that's simply not the case with our products, right? You can always take out 10% penalty free withdrawals. So in this scenario, 10% uh, of 220000 so a little over uh, $20,000 every single year if they needed it. So something to keep in mind if a client's giving you that objection. That's awesome. Perfect. Well, hey, that was all I had. Appreciate everybody's time. And uh, I'll follow up with an email to you, Phil. If anybody needs anything, um, feel free to, to reach out to our team here. Thanks so much, Kyle. And, uh, you know, for those of you, again, uh, just kind of, talking about what we were talking about before. Uh, if you have uh, the opportunity to uh, understand what we have here, weekly trainings, you know, follow us here. If you miss any of the trainings, we got our YouTube channel too, with all of these being uploaded to it. And uh, really just appreciate the partnership uh, from our carriers. And, uh, you know, you guys as agents, uh, please let me know if there's anything I can do to help, text, call, email. Uh, whatever it takes. So thank you guys and uh, have a great uh, long weekend and look forward to seeing you next week. All right. See ya.